Welcome back. Okay, it's been another long while, but that's just how it goes. Um, so, done quite a few things. Uh, I think the graphics are a little bit different. Um, you know, I've added in some new stuff. Uh, there's some rocks, there's a star, and uh, there's new things. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll just get started. So, uh, let's just walk past all these things uh, real quick. Um, I've added in some new uh, procedurally generated graphics. Um, I've created a singular base shader that is used by everything you can see here, except maybe the engine. I don't think I updated that, um, which gives me control over all sorts of things. You know, I can. I've got this stuff here. Uh, I hope it'll be visible in the video. I might have to zoom in, but like this has a shine on it that is procedurally generated. All the stuff, um, yeah. So, um, which is nice. Uh, I will show a test box at some point, uh, which kind of has, shows off a little bit more about how it works. Um, could even be another video. Anyway, um, it allows me to do certain things like I should have brought it over. My room with things in it. Come with me, little energizer. And we come over here, open it up, Boop. See, and that turns on. It's all procedurally generated, there's no second UV, it's all... Eh, yeah, it's all based on world positions, not actually UV positions. But it also uses UV positions. Anyway, I will have to explain that another time. But yep, so that's all there. Um, it seems to be working reasonably well. Performance could be a little bit weird, I don't know, I would really need to stress test it, but yeah. Um, I've got a new little roller thing here. So we've got the power system output. You see that a small hydrogen power supply hard point is active and producing 24 units and everything else is inactive. But we can see the left engine there. If we go over here and turn that on, nothing over here happens. But you can see the left engine active using 5 units of power. And max power is 24, usage 5. Uh, so yeah, so this little roller I'm quite happy with. It's got uh, momentum, which is definitely needed for something this short, but you know, that was fun to put together. Anyway, um, so I've started on this whole crafting system, I guess. Don't want to kind of box it in too much, but it's kind of just doing my own thing. Oh, you can see some of the shading here. Little, yeah. Anyway, so I've got it where this is also like a component in that it has hard points, the controller hard point and the output hard point, and even the output has its own storage unit hard point, and this is a storage unit, which had, oh, well, can't see it anymore. There we go, push it up, there we go, it's got a little hole there. <laughs> It'll be more obvious once we plug it in. Um, so let's plug this all together. I've tried making the physics less jumpy when things get plugged together. Yeah, that worked a little better that time. Um, and let's plug in the storage unit. There we go. So it's kind of like a chain. So this is also the input. Um, and we should be able to put ore in here, and then it goes through the tumbler, which is just called the ore processor, into this output where it sort of waits and then gets put into a storage unit. Um, Kind of the point is that you might have multiple storage units and you'll move them between and be like, all right, once this is one is full, take it out, put in the next one. Um, or this is a greater system that I haven't built yet, but the idea is to actually have it where these can all be plugged into a wall somewhere and then this just goes into the floor and then it just automatically fills up storage units so you don't need to be swapping them out. But uh, yeah, that's, that's for later. So, I've already got some rocks hanging out on the ship here. Um, I've changed them from just small rock to a chondrite, chond, chondrite rock. I hope, I, <laughs> I hope I'm saying that and spelled that right. And a salacious rock. I hope I'm also saying that right. Um, it's got silicon in it. And this has mostly got carbon in it. But not entirely carbon. So, uh, I can pick all these up. And they all float around in front of me, and I can pass through them because it was getting real annoying that things that I picked up can push me around. Um, and we can put them in here. So, over here we can see that filled to capacity. So there is that 
light there means it currently has ore waiting to go in and then it has capacity for another 10 to actually be sort of waiting queued up could be maybe visualized a little better now each rock also has more than one element in it um, but the tumbler will only process one thing at a time so if it's got carbon and iron it'll only process the carbon once that's all done it'll process the iron so the processing current or processed kind of is actually each element so let's turn it on <laughs> this turns on this is also the procedurally generated Ooh, you can hear things coming across and we're going to see in this capacity hasn't gone down because it's still processing the same rock and then once there we go now it's started on the next rock you can see over here we've got nickel and iron uh this this i just realized this thing is probably too short it probably is cutting off where the siliceous the silicon is coming in that's why we can't see it this whole thing here is kind of more debug i want a whole different ui for how this actually displays i don't want there to be a tooltip to indicate how this is going up um Oh, there we go. Turns off. There we go. It's filled up, and it's like, hey, it's active, but there's nothing in there. Um, that could probably turn off since it's not active. Anyway, um, so now we can pop this out and pick it up. There we go. We can move this. <laughs> I've changed the buttons. I've <laughs> got it where you can basically add multiple things to pick up, and then it's a different button to drop. Anyway. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's over there now. Um, yeah. I'll show you also real quick, this energizer stuff does also happen in other things. It's, oops. Are you want to put you? Doesn't want to go in? I think I know why. Many things. Always, always something little. Anyway, let's, yep, we can still poop you. That's good. Uh, let's go get some more rocks, even though we can't actually see exactly what's uh, going on. Warp. Alrighty. So we've got some more rocks. And then... Uh, okay. <laughs> some of the collisions for things have been uh, messed with. Um, and clearly, I need to... There we go. There's... A few. Do I only have carbon rocks so far? Whoop, I'm hitting the same ones. All right. Um, so some of the shading on them does still look a little weird after they spawn. It's always something little tweaks to to do. Um, we kind of just assumed that we're always in a spacesuit. Um, Oh, wait, is that a salacious rock? I think it is. So this, you can kind of see, yeah, salacious rock. There's some of the shading, but it hasn't been set to the right values, so it's kind of at some weird default that's way too intense. Let's pick up some of these things. Yeah, that's way too reflective. It's probably got even some emissive values on it that should be off. <laughs> anyway, let's pick up all of these. Come with me, rocks. Um, yeah, so I've never, I never got around to in, uh, cr recreating the tractor beams. Um, I'm basically at the point where I could recreate the tractor beams, but you know, having fun just doing this. Come on, rocks. This is like a personal tractor beam. <laughs> yeah, hit. There we go. So yeah, we've still got some salacious rocks and chondrite rocks. Ooh. Come around. Come in here. Whoops. I detached it. There we go. So we can still turn it on, but there's not enough power. Not enough power. What's going on? Right, we can see left weapon, right weapon, left engine, right engine are all using up enough, and the ore processor itself needs another five. So if we turn that off, this now turns on. Uh, and now this is complaining. Output. Can output? Uh, that's more the label of what that button. <laughs> it's red, which means it cannot output. So this will sit here and tumble, but nothing is happening until <laughs> we pick this up, which was going in a weird direction. But, you know, don't worry about that later. There we go. Yeah, we can see over here, the ore processing sensor used using five. So it needed more power than what we 
could get, but it was on a these external objects here that just receive power from the ship itself are on a lower priority than the hard points that the ship uses. So none of these things will take precedence over, you know, the engines or the weapons firing. So and then so this is active using five. Ah, yeah, because I got to actually turn it off. <laughs> now it's inactive. And we can probably turn the engine back on. There we go. Cool. So now this is getting more full. And yeah, I still haven't figured it out if this is the if this is a great game loop yet or not. But I'm having fun with it. Um, tractor beams would definitely make some of this stuff a bit easier to pull in. And I kind of already made an example of that, so I wanted to see like what happens if you've got a ship that doesn't have tractor beams. You know, like stuff like that. Um. So yeah you can still go out there and just have to pick it up yourself you know um, and each of these have different resources in them they're sort of randomly spawned and the actual rock that comes off this asteroid is randomly spawned they all have different weights so this is a mostly chondrite carbonous asteroid but it will still spit out some sil um, silicon ones and all that uh, but just with a lower chance and you know i've got it where some of the smaller uh, carbonous ones will uh, have less resources on them. Um, probably don't need to be spitting out exact percentages like this, but uh, yeah. So then the main point is, all right, so if we get back to like, what's the what's the goal of all this? The main point is then, great, we've got this unit, the ore has been processed. You can then put that into a fabricator and then the fabricator can spit out new things. Uh, mostly thinking to begin with small things, right? So you could spit out like, I need a new energizer coil. Then I could be like, great, I've got a new energizer core. I can put this in over here. Now I've got even now I've got even more power, max 28. I can actually have Yeah, to complain, but it's because once you turn it off and on, anyway. You know, this would actually only use up I'd have 25 power. So it's like great, I was able to fabricate something that then gave me more, you know, helped me improve my own ship, basically. Yeah, turn it off again. Um yeah, and again, that fabricator could pull from an individual storage unit or from the like wall-mounted storage units, which I haven't made yet. Um, and yeah, that then also ties into like having it where the like, stuff can be repaired. You could be like, great, cool, I need this. You know, I've made a new thing. I can make my, my laser guns better and all of that. Um, some of the stuff to do with this not working is because when I mount this on startup, um, some of the things that happen out of order, which means this isn't in the correct actual location as if I had mounted it myself. So when I drop, yeah, it falls down. I know why. I haven't gotten around to fixing it yet because I'm like, ah, I need to change that whole system anyway. Um, yeah, there's no weapon there now. Yeah, anyway, so a lot of it has been like playing around like the same Uber shader, oh, which maybe I will show us off next. Yeah, so a lot of been playing around with this Uber shader idea I've got, um, which may or may not even be a good idea. But you know, it's been working for me so far. Anyway, I'll do that. All right, so you can see from here, I've got my test plane cube set up here with all the materials. And this is just a face that has all the entire color palette that I currently use. Um, so each of the UVs right now are mapped down to, for all the colors that I do, the UVs are just mapped down to a point on one of these squares. It makes it very easy to just be like, I want this color here. And then all the colors are consistent. I don't really need to do much, anything complicated in terms of UV mapping because I just go all these vertices here. Um, so if we want though, I've divided each of this eight by eight color palette a further eight by eight we add in some of these values and then we have to set all of these to at least something otherwise it does look a little weird and then maybe there's a little yeah we can start to see there's stuff happening within each of the eight by eight um we can focus down however onto one onto one square so here you can see i've individually set down that 
this bottom left is basically normal and then these are all flat and then this has some more this has nothing on it no smoothness at all um, no metallic or anything or no emissive and then I go this has some smoothness this has some metallic and this is emissive and then if we move across one we've now got something that's very speckly and then we can change the smooth set of how speckly it is then we have something that's larger again uh, not animated, but it's like a simplex noise, uh, which again, you can sort of tweak some of these settings, uh, tweak the roughness and all this sort of stuff. Um, you get this static, and then you have this one is animated, but it's animated again using one of the, the slider. So this slider can be set to zero, and it also doesn't look like it's animated, but you move it across and it starts animating, and you can lerp this to some value. Um, then we have something that's supposed to look a little bit more like Veroni, Ver, Veroni noise. Um, uses some fancy things that I found on Shader Toys. I will have to credit them. Um, here's my bastardized version to try and make them look a bit more square. It doesn't look all that great, but uh, kind of works. Where's the scale? The scale's maybe a little high. Um, and then here's my attempt at doing hexagons. Now I really wanted to have like proper... 3D hexagons, like in some sort of tiling thing, but I realize I just do not know how to do sign distance field stuff very well. Um, so I've gone with 2D hexagons and it just uses, tries to use the current direction of the normal to figure out the orientation of it. Um, let's start this rotating and you'll also start to see this stuff, it, even though it exists in, so the coordinates for all this stuff exists in world space. So the size of these things is going to be dependent, oh, that's very bright. The size of any of these features is going to be very dependent. Yeah, hexagons didn't work in this orientation. No. Uh, the size of these features is going to be very dependent on the texture scale and not to do with the actual size of uh, anything else. Um, not to do with UV mapping, none of that. Uh, which then means that like things like the simplex noise and all of this uh, will always be consistent. You know, it looks good from any sort of angle. It also means that when it wraps around, because the, it's a simplex noise in 3D space, if it wraps around the edge of something, the sort of bubbles and the noise of it, um, put again, um, will follow it as it goes around the edge. Um, I was trying to really just crank up the me metallic. Uh, so you can see a little bit on the right side here, some of the lighting. Um, let to stop you rotating that direction. If I rotate you, you know, along the Y here, you can start to see a little bit more of the noise as it sort of comes past here with these hexagons. Um, yeah. So again, within, so this is just one color. Um, we zoom out, which means that my color palette pixel, this full texture here is 64 by 64 pixels, which means in Blender, all I have to do is go UV mapping snap to pixels, and I know that in the bottom left it's completely flat, no, no fancy features. But if I go across, let me put this back down to. Um, but if I go across one, I'll get speckly. If I go up, I'll get a bit of smoothness. Um, if I go over here, I know it will be animated, but only animated if I control this, which allows me to sort of be like, all right, this part is going to be emissive and animated, and you know, I control the speed of how quickly that should look, and you know can use you know step range to sort of blur things in or if it goes negative change the features how they look as well um, gives me a lot to play with without having to do much in the way of UV mapping in blender um, I'm not 100% happy with all these options and I've kind of got all of these in reserve up here um, but yeah it's uh, it's working out so far I hope it's not too expensive uh, having one shader that just handles all of this, but uh, it's been okay so far. Here's hoping. I could be doing a horrible mistake here that someone who's more experienced would be like, yeah, we tried that and that does not work, but I haven't seen too many people talk about this approach, so I don't know if it's a real thing or not. Um, it very well might not be a real thing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and obviously it's always still gonna be limited. Like, there's always gonna be something where it's like, hey, this still doesn't work well. You can kind of see down here, here you can see it kind of works interestingly with uh, when you're animating it, but it's not emissive, it's just uh, it's just smooth or metallic. Yeah, metallic is too high. 
Um, again, most of these effects, because I still want it to look fairly low poly, you know, simple, not much texture. But having just a little bit, it's very subtle, you know, just the parts that are emissive are emissive. Um, yeah, it's working for me so far. We will see if this continues though. Anyway, um, that's this. Uh, I've actually had this ready for a while, but I kind of wanted to actually make some models with it and actually try to use it, but like with the energizer the coils and the all processor, I wanted something to actually show off. Otherwise it's like, great, am I even going to use this? So anyway, I've got plans for the next one, uh, but who knows when that will come out. Life is busy. Anyway, see ya.